So uh, we were talking about the interview uh, and we were talking about how for the interview, the interview which is myself, um, we want to play it on a, we really want the interviewer to get into Diggs' head. So have him really, really like genuinely so serious about like this is a serious thing and he's trying to get inside Jake's head. So we're thinking mm. like the interviewer having like glasses, you know, proper files. We need to do some level of backstory on yeah. why yeah. this interview is happening. What type of interview are you? Are we doing a newspaper interview? Or are we talking more police? I mean, it could be... Or even insane asylum. I think, yeah, that would love to insane yeah. asylum, yeah. Do that, all right. You can be yeah. sort of, um, maybe less of an interview and more of a therapist. Yeah, 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 I'm thinking that, so. Uh, therapist. Yeah, so, setting. So if you're a psychoanalyst. Therapist. And I've got some extreme anxiety and some schizophrenia. Yeah. Can you, can you send me a picture of this? Yeah. Sorry. So, do you want to go through it? Yeah. Do you guys... I'm right. You have to be talking to a man who knows. What were you going to say? I was just going to ask if I could, like, if they mind just getting shouty. Because oh, I think this is a shouty role for me. Okay. Alright. Alright, let's go. Okay. Well, Mr. Jiggs. How would you say things are in the pornographic book trade? I make 200 a week. 200? Yeah, I make around about 200 a week, eh? I see. So, how would you say things were in the pornographic book trade? Oh, only fair. Only fair? Fair to middling. Why would you say that, Mr. J? Well, it's got a lot to do with Christmas between you and me. Christmas? <sighs> yeah. Well, what happens is, you see, is that the trade takes a bit of bashing about Christmas time. It takes a good few months to recover from Christmas time. The pornographic bit. Oh, sorry, I would like to do that again. It takes a good few months to recover. Christmas time, the pornographic book trade does. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, it's got something to do with it, as you see. You don't get all that many people sending pornographic books for Christmas presents. I mean, you get a few, of course. But not all that many. No, we can't really say that people in our trade get much benefit from the Christmas spirit. You, uh, you know what I mean? Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Jakes. <laughs> well, there you are. We made the best of it. I mean, I put a sprig of holly in there. I put holly up all over the shop. Doesn't seem to make much difference. What sort of people do you get in your shop, Mr. James? I beg your pardon? What sort of people do you get in your shop? I'd rather not answer that question, thanks. Why not? I should think the security police could tell you a thing or two about that. Security police? Yes. They've got their dossiers. But don't you worry about that. But we have no security police in this country. Don't you? I'd be surprised. They know all about it. Take it from me. I've seen their dossiers. You've seen their dossiers? Dossiers? I've looked at more of their dossiers than you've had nights off. I see. Well, perhaps we'd better pass on another question. Dossiers? I've been there morning and afternoon checking over their dossiers, identifying my customers, identifying their photographs right into the middle of the night, right into the middle of their dossiers. 
I had no idea. We've got them all taped in the pornographic book trade. Don't you worry about that. Yes, well... Um, sorry, can you say that again? I forgot. Yes, well... You've no need to become anxious about that. Mr. Jakes, every single individual that passes through my door goes out. What? Every single dirty-minded individual that passes through my door goes straight out again. As soon as he's chosen his fancy, out he goes. You don't keep them in? Keep them in? Never. I would keep one of them in my own little pornographic bookshop, not me. Not that they haven't begged, mind you. Begged. They've gone down on their bended knees and begged me to allow them to stay the night in the back room, in the punishment section. Not me. Not since I got the word. I think perhaps... You don't think the security police are the only people who've got dossiers, do you? No, I'm sure. You don't think that, do you? Get out of here. I'm a part of the night during my dossiers. I've got one on every single member of my clientele. And the day's coming, my boy, I can tell you. Coming? We're going to hold a special exhibition, see? We'll have them all in there, white in the face, peeping, peering, sweating. And then, all in there. Oh, sorry. Showing me the false credentials to get to the top shelf and then at a given moment we lock the doors and turn the floodlights on and then we'll have them all revealed for what they are. What are they? They're all the same. Every one of them. That's a fun part to do, isn't it? Mm. Right, let's talk about some context. Yes. Yeah. Well, what did I have for? I. Um. I like the way we did that. I enjoyed that. Mm. I, don't, I really wanted to do the pull you off the table thing, but I couldn't find a place where I think it could go in. It could go, I think it could go maybe around here. Mm, I was thinking that. Because that's where you're cutting me off. Your character seems to get quite anxious there. Mm. Maybe at what? Have you seen it? Yeah, alright, so if we, if we move back a bit so we're within. So if you're sat on the other side of the table, I was thinking if you're sat down and I'm actually pacing about. Yeah. I think it would be quite almost. I think it would be quite. Um, just, uh, I can't think of the word, but I think <coughs> if I literally stay in the same position the whole time, I think it could be quite. It could be quite you know, like unnerving because like it's like I don't really care how your mental health is deteriorating. I'm just here to do my job. So it's like I'm just sat here just still writing notes, even though you're pacing around me. Mm. I'm just still here. Like, don't even look at my character. Look, yeah. glance up maybe from your papers. Yeah. Keep on writing down until I pull you over the thing. Maybe look up when I start to cut you off a bit. Mm. Like, I had no idea. I, yeah, and then I'll pull you over, and then I think from there, we could stay in that position if I'm pinning you to the table mm. right to the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm monologuing then a yeah. bit. So I could just pin you down and say it all like, into your face. Which would be fun to do. It'd be fun to play, if you want to do that. Yeah. Obviously, it's an interesting thing. It's an interesting place to take that, isn't it? Mm. But it could be fun. Or maybe that's just my weird, deep-seated need to take things in a introspective, kind of original way. No, I think I think it's it's kind of because like it's basically like a scenario where you know, kind of the interview ends up going like mm. wrong almost. I'd want to walk it about, but my hold is in my hand. So. Uh, Is 
Is that where I'm pulling you over? Yeah. <laughs> do you want to move this table up and walk it up? Walk it about. I mean? Could that do. Kind of tone of it, that's cool. about these two no walls. Yeah. Tell you what. Yeah. Do you want to pause that while we get stuff ready for the next one? Yeah. yeah. And then we'll it's just to show they'll have another conversation in ten minutes.